Hi, my name is Micah Martin. I'm a senior at the FV Pankow Center in Clinton Township, Michigan, and I'm really excited to talk to you, Dr. Langman, because there's a high level of anxiety among students after the Oxford shooting, and everyone wants some kind of insight into the situation. Well, thank you for having me. Can you tell us a little bit more about the psychology of the school shooters that you know of? We have to recognize that there's no one type, there's no profile of school shooters. They're a remarkably diverse group. Now, that doesn't mean there are no patterns. So from a psychological perspective, I divide them into three categories. The first is what I call the psychopathic school shooter. And this is someone who is incredibly narcissistic. He lives for himself. He doesn't really think that rules apply to him. He's above such things as the law or morality. He's special. So these are people who are sadistic, callous, angry, and just don't care about other human beings. The second type is what I call the psychotic school shooter. And this is where the issue of mental illness comes into play. These people may be schizophrenic or have another uh, diagnostic uh, issue that involves some kind of psychotic symptoms. And that means typically hallucinations, such as hearing voices, or delusions, which are strongly held false beliefs. And most commonly, that's a paranoid delusion or maybe a delusion of grandeur. So that's a very different type of person than the psychopathic shooter. Now, most of the kids who are psychopathic or psychotic come from essentially intact, stable families. When you get to the third category, however, that all changes. And the third category is what I call the traumatized school shooter. And these are kids who come from chronically and severely violent dysfunctional homes where the parents are drug addicts or alcoholics. So you've got three very different types of perpetrators from different backgrounds. They end up doing what looks like the same thing. It's a school shooting, but how they got to that point and why they're doing it can vary dramatically. Now, before I wrap this up though, I need to say that most people who are psychopathic, psychotic, or traumatized don't become school shooters. They never kill anybody. So there are other factors that go into this, but from a psychological perspective, that's the starting point that I use in my research. It's so interesting that you said that because I think like most of the students I've spoken with, they think that they've had like a negative upbringing, but it's it's not always just that. Thank you so much, Dr. Langman, for speaking with me today and giving me and some of my fellow teens out there some insight on what's been going on and showing things from another perspective. Thank you. It's been my pleasure.